I would not be happy. If he does a nuclear test, I will not be happy. Do you mean military action? I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Now, with regards to the tensions on the North Korean peninsula, the U.S. president is not ruling out taking military action, that is, if North Korea carries out another nuclear test. In a new interview, Mr. Trump also seemed to downplay the latest missile launch attempt by Pyongyang. Let's listen. Mr. President, you and the administration said to North Korea, don't test a missile. They have tested a missile. Is the pressure not working? Well, I didn't say don't test a missile. He's going to have to do what he has to do. But he understands we're not going to be very happy. And I will tell you, a man that I've gotten to like and respect, the president of China, President Xi, I believe has been putting pressure on him also. But so far, perhaps nothing's happened, and perhaps it has. This was a small missile. This was not a big missile. This was not a nuclear test, which he was expected to do three days ago. Uh, we'll see what happens. You say not happy. What does that mean? I would not be happy. If he does a nuclear test, I will not be happy. And I can tell you also, I don't believe that the president of China, who is a very respected man, will be happy either. Not happy mean military action? I don't know. I mean, we'll see. CNN has the only U.S. television reporter in North Korea, Will Ripley, on his 12th trip there, joining us now live from Pyongyang. Good to have you with us, Will. Uh, so you heard the president's comments there. Given his response about North Korea and the possibility of a military response, is that having any noticeable impact uh, in Pyongyang? North Korean uh, authorities have always thought that the United States could take military action against them at any moment. That is their justification for continuing to test these missiles and continuing to develop nuclear weapons. They believe and they tell their people here that they are under the imminent threat of invasion by the United States. And that is how they justify spending a tremendous amount of their resources on weapons of mass destruction, even if it does mean cutbacks in other areas. This is an impoverished country overall, even though we do see a lot of new construction and a higher living standard here in the capital of Pyongyang. We're never allowed to go outside of the capital where 22 million other North Koreans live to find out uh, what their lives are like under the current Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un, although officials here do insist that the living standards are growing in the countryside as well. And so what you have from North Korea today, not a direct response yet to President Trump's latest interview, but they did put out some state media editorials. They talked about the, uh, the mix-up in the South over who who's going to pay that $1 billion for the THAAD missile defense system. They talked about a group in South Korea that's calling on that government to de-escalate tensions with Pyongyang. And what we haven't seen is that sixth nuclear test that President Trump talked about that reportedly China has warned Pyongyang not to conduct. The president saying that that test could have happened as recently as a few days ago uh, really was news to us because the last that we had heard from the United States, they did not feel that a nuclear test was imminent at Pungay Ri last week, even though they had believed that for several weeks prior that uh, the North Korean leader could have pushed the button on that test at any time. So is this strategy working? Is the president sending a message that it's okay for North Korea to take test some of these small missiles, but not bigger missiles like ICBMs, and not okay for them to conduct a nuclear test. The North Koreans say they will conduct a nuclear test whenever they see fit, but they haven't done it yet.